Hello, this is Mike K from Scratch, and welcome back to the next chapter in the ongoing Game Dev Toolbox. A look at the essential tools for uh, game development, be it for programmers, artists, audio guys, designers, you name it, we cover it. And today we're going to be looking at something that kind of falls into between the category of um, an asset library and a tool, uh, and it's called Shader Toy. Now, Shader Toy is something you should definitely be aware of if you are working with shaders. And if you are working with shaders, there's a good possibility you actually are already aware of it. Now, it's a completely free website, and let's head on over there now. There we go. Uh, so this is Shader Toy. Now I'm going to warn you up front, and no doubt this is going to come in this demonstration. Shader Toy can be a bit of a resource pig. The way it was designed, I don't necessarily agree with. It just throws too many shaders at your browser at once. And you can see a live preview of any particular shader in your browser um, in WebGL. For example, uh, the shader of the week, I highlight over it. We can see it in effect. And we go through these various other shaders. Uh, highlight over them, you can see the results that they perform. And that's really what Shaded Toy is. It is this gigantic repository for sharing and um you know, downloading shaders, uh, GLSL shaders. So if you're looking for a particular shader for your games, for example, say a fire effect, just come up here and search for fire. And this is this is where it really kills your computer because it's throwing um, a dozen GLSL shaders or WebGL shaders at your browser right now. And your browser just does not do a particularly good job of it. I am not on a slow computer by any definition of the word. And this is basically maxing out one of the cores on my eight core machine. So Shader Toy is a resource pick. I wish they did a thumbnail instead of actually loading all the shaders, uh, but that's the nature of the beast. Now, the neat thing is we come in here, you click a particular shader, and there you can see it in action. You can pause it. Uh, you can see the frame rate that you get for said shader. If you really want, you can switch into VR mode. You can turn audio on and off. You can go full screen or not. Uh, but the most important part is here on the right hand side. On the right hand side here, you can see the actual code powering that shader. And then here you can see the channels of that shader as well. These are the inputs. So you can see uh, this, this um, image is being sent in. Um, so if you have, you know, you want to work on a texture or whatever for your shader, this is how you would wire your particular inputs in or cube maps or videos or music effects or input, etc. And then here is the code powering this particular shader. Now, writing shaders is not something I actually really enjoy doing. I actually kind of suck at it. I don't think well in terms of shaders. So a resource like this is great for me. And then once we're in here, we can also see we could go ahead and actually modify the shader and we'll see a direct result over here. So for example, um, I, I actually have never looked at the shader before, so I have no idea what I can modify, but let's just randomly change a number. We'll change you up to eight. I don't know what that number is actually doing, but Let's change it and hit, and there you see the immediate results. So you hit play to change your shader down here, and there you go. Now, one of the things with the GLSL shader is there's a lot of inputs to it. And here are the shader inputs that are available on Shader Toy. So you can see here, there's a number of things passed into you. So if your shader wants to res um, respond to the position of the mouse, you see there's the mouse being passed in right here, as well as um, mouse button clicked, etc. cetera. Uh, the channel, the date, sample rate, uh, the amount of time that's elapsed, the amount of time since the beginning, uh, the resolution and pixels. So you're getting some details in that your shader can use to, to deal with. But you see a shader you want, you go ahead and you can grab it here. Now there are some basic functionality here in terms of editing shaders as well. And we'll go ahead, we'll actually create a new shader to show you that. So new shader, yeah, let's go ahead and leave. So here you are with your new shader, here's the default. So for example, if we want to switch this out to be instead of this miasma of color they've got going on here, I'm just gonna switch it to a simple red. So the red channel, green channel, blue channel, alpha channel, and done. And with that change made, oops, 1.0.0.0, 1. What's your issue? Oh, that's not a period, that's a comma. All right, let's try that again. So there you go, there is a red shader. You see uh, the last time since your shader started, the frame rate your shader is predictably running at. You can see we're frame capped at 60 frames per second in the browser here. Um, we could go full screen on our shader, so we wish to. Uh, and you've got this over here, you've got your basic editor. Now again, you, here are the inputs that are provided to you. Uh, we could go ahead, we could create um, different uh, buffers. Down here we've got same thing. So we can select an input. So if we wanted a texture being fed into our shader, we could feed it in that way. 
we wanted to set in a different one, we can feed it in that way. And then you can now interact with those with your particular shader code. Um, the final thing is we have a basic editor here. You see we've got um, code folding, like so. You've got syntax highlighting, and that's about it. There's not, um, there's no code completion or autocomplete here, unfortunately. Uh, so it's probably not the best environment to run your shaders in, but the nice thing is it is real time. So you come up here and say, change the color out run it, you'll immediately see the end result. Uh, down here, we've got the, also the option of um, semi-full screening our editing surface. Uh, we've got control over our font size, so we can make this much bigger should we wish. And then finally, and somewhat usefully, uh, we have this help window, which basically gives you the list of built-in functions in their GLSL support. Um, so pretty cool. Uh, it's a very straightforward and focused tool. Uh, but what is most impressive about it is the sheer um, amount of, so I bring up waves instead of water. Yes, we'll go ahead and leave there. So you're searching for a wave shader and we're gonna, you know, we're gonna overlap a little bit with our waters, but you see here our end result is 184 results. Now another thing, and I didn't really show you this before, we can also come through and look at them in a slideshow view. So, you know, we can flip on to the next one. Is it done with that? All right, I'm not sure the control to go to the next shader. Actually, I may have just set my computer into a spiral of angry. No, it's not. I don't know why it's not responding. Anyways, there's a slideshow view, um, not making my computer happy, but uh, so you can go through the shaders one by one and see the end result. Or again, you can go back to the, um, come on, all right. I'll just give it up there. My computer is not happy with me at this moment. And that is, the again, the big downside. Probably the only... Nah, so there it switched to the next shader. So just brutally slow. And there is the downside to the shader toy site. I guess that's why they're kind of carrying this beta tag still. Um, the performance can be a little bit iffy at time, for sure. Um, and that's probably the biggest negative. And again, if they just used thumbnails for the non-playing and you only played it when you selected it, that would be a lot nicer. Now this is a, you know, it's nice to go through, but it does kick the crap out of your computer when you come up here and search. But what I do like, again, is just the sheer amount of results that are already on here. So if you're searching for a particular shader, you know, when you're getting 200, 300 results per search, you're gonna find something you like. Now it might take you some time to go through them, as again, this is not the fastest performing interface in the world, so you're, then we're on to the next page now. Uh, but you will find what you need and then when you do find what you need you can simply select it and you are into the code which can now be used in your actual uh, game now one question you might be asking is what about the license can i actually go ahead and use these in my games and that is where this comes in all the shaders you create in shader toy in, uh, sh uh, shader toy i can't speak today are owned by you you decide which license applies to every shader you create uh, all right, it does not truncate there. Every shader you create, we recommend you paste your preferred license on top of your code. If you do not place a license on a shader, it will be protected by our default license. Their default license is the Creative Commons Attribute Non-Commercial Share Alike uh, 3.4 Unported License. <sighs> now to get into what that actual license means, uh, yeah, click it. You are free to share, copy, redistribute the material in any form or format, remix, transform, and build upon the material. Uh, under the following terms, you need to attribute it, so you basically put it in your game credits somewhere, that you are not making money off of it, and there's where the big deal inside is going to be, so you're going to want to make sure that the license of the shader that you actually select is compatible with you. And this non-commercial is not. And that's what sucks. There's where Shader Toy's big flaw is potentially. Now, it's not Shader Toy's flaw. That's just their default license. But if whoever published the shader does not make it, you know, basically uh, available, you're kind of screwed by that non-commercial bit. And if we go back, let's just pick one of the random shaders we took. Um, go back to Fire. And I'll just pick, you know, before it's even loaded. We'll go ahead with this guy. And the license is not listed and therefore non-commercial. So there's the gotcha. You'd have to contact the author to get permission to use it. Uh, though you can definitely use Shader Toy as a learning resource and hopefully you will find shaders that have uh, more liberal licenses and you're good to go. Uh, but you are going to run into some copyright potentially um, with a couple of choices you get. So you can't just copy and paste verbatim. Just do be aware of that. Um, 
that's it. Uh, so again, there are definitely the, the biggest downside to shader toy is the performance at times, but uh, the licensing of said shaders can be a little tricky so that you can't just copy and paste verbatim. But as a learning tool, invaluable. And it is potential that whoever published the shader gave it to you in a license that is useful for you. And in that case, uh, you're good to go right off the box. You can publish it verbatim, use it in your game however you wish, but it's going to come down to the individual license. Now, the nice thing is at the same time, you can also publish on here a commercial shader that you don't want people to just copy and paste verbatim. Although I don't really know why you would share something in this regard, but not make it you know, make it a strings attached sharing, but that's just me. Uh, but you do have the option there. So you can also, you know, sign up and uh, be able to publish your own shaders, etc., to it. Um, and that's it. A uh, very focused tool, very straightforward. Um, not really, um, you know, trying to be too much. It's very focused in what it is. Oh, wait a minute. Do, 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 do. Oh, no, never mind. I was thinking this guy had a license. Uh, but no, it's based on something else. So uh, great resource for learning about shaders, potentially great resource for getting shaders. Just got to be careful about those licensing. Uh, but it is probably the number one place to actually learn GLSL shaders. And it's cool. You can actually just come in here and spend a couple hours just being entertained by some shaders. There's some really impressive work on here. So that's all for today. I hope you found that useful. If you did, please do click like. Uh, there's an entire series of things in the Game Dev Toolbox. If you want to discover some more game development tools or resources, uh, do check out that playlist. I'll link it down below. Uh, we do this kind of stuff all the time. So if you're interested in more game development uh, resources, tutorials, news, etc., cetera, uh, do click subscribe and hopefully you will find lots here to like. All right. See you all later. Goodbye.